Part 3 Essential Practice Chapter 12 A Good Way of Experiencing the Beauty of Kriya Yoga In the second part of my book I have tried to give the reader the opportunity to familiarize with various procedures of Kriya Yoga. I have tried to describe in detail different techniques, perhaps too many techniques. Probably the reader has made some experiments with different procedures and has noticed that some of them are more effective than others. Surely with few techniques the whole spiritual path of Kriya Yoga can be mastered. Now, if I had the intention of teaching Kriya to a beginner, which techniques would I choose to teach? My desire is obviously to see good and solid results. I want that a person, through the practice of Kriya that I have recommended to him, be born to the spiritual life. Besides the physical birth, to feed, to work, to create a family, and the mental birth. To find pleasure in thinking with your own head, there is a spiritual birth. To find perfect joy coming in your life without a plausible reason. Those who are born to mental life only, cannot understand what the birth to the spiritual life is. This birth rarely happens, and when it happens it doesn't consist in the decision to live in a different way adopting certain rituals, and professing a certain faith. The spiritual life doesn't start through a mental effort. A human being must first have a contact with the joy that is in the center of her his heart. That joy is somehow related with the spine, with the spiritual centers that are found along it, and is experienced with the intuitive vision that happens through the third eye, sometimes the contact with the internal beatitude is accompanied by the experience of a strong current of energy in the spine. The experience is sometimes preceded by inexplicable fear, sometimes by real anguish. I think that the reader has familiarity with these events. Now, what is necessary to teach in order that the person has a strong contact with that joy? The first thing I will teach is Kriya Pranayam as taught by Sri Mukherjee first lesson, technique of Kriya Pranayam as it was explained by Sri Mukherjee. The Kriya Pranayam as taught by Sri Mukherjee has been the best discovery in the field of Kriya since my initiation into Kriya in 1975. Sri Mukherjee is a nice person, a very likable and open-hearted yogi. He is well-intentioned. He told me a thing that nobody had ever told, I don't want to leave this body allowing that this original Kriya dies with me. He really wants to do something practical in this direction. Preliminary Remark The technique of Kriya Pranayam is practiced to enter Sushumna. In order to enter it, you need to make the breath extremely subtle. Actually, you can enter Sushumna only by behaving with extreme delicacy. This happens when, during Kriya Pranayam, your inner gaze and all your attention are fixed in the central point of the spiritual eye between your eyebrows and not in any other place. This point is Kutastha. Therefore, put your whole attention there. Be mindful of avoiding any strain on the eyes. Everything should stay natural. Many try to raise the energy in Sushumna with force, in a coarse way. In this situation, Kundalini does not move upwards but is dispersed and burned in the body. This may create diseases because initially the nadis are partially blocked. Your Kriya Pranayam will produce only stress. Many endeavor to produce the sound in the throat since the beginning and create a strong visualization of the energy that comes up and down. This is not correct. Therefore, I repeat, we must start in an extremely simple way and proceed without expecting striking results. But then, at a certain point, something profound and meaningful will happen. Main Instruction By keeping both the shoulders in a natural position, by expanding the chest a little bit, by bringing the back in a straight position, by lowering gently the chin, by mentally gazing between the two eyebrows, the position becomes steady effortlessly. Do not cross the eyes. Simply set yourself in the point between the eyebrows as if this were a cave where you take shelter. Have a deep, natural breath. Chant mentally Om six times in Kutastha during inhalation and six times during exhalation. Unlike other forms of Kriya, during this initial part you don't put Om in the physical seat of each chakra. 
Rather you don't feel the body at all. Your breath doesn't require effort, therefore you don't make any sound in the throat. Perhaps this will seem to you not a correct way of practicing Kriya. But please practice this way. This is what Lahiri Mahasha and Swami Pranbananda Giri instructed. If your breath is very short, accept this situation without trying. With uneasiness, to lengthen your breath. A longer breath will appear spontaneously in time. What matters is to stay focused at Kutastha with the mental chant of Om. So, while you are inhaling or exhaling you knock at the door of Kutastha by chanting 6 plus 6 Oms. The recommended number of breaths is 108 and therefore, if you don't fall asleep, if are not disturbed by external events, at the end you shall have mentally chanted the syllable Om 12 times 108 equals 1296 times. Knocking with Om at Kutastha will give you the power to mentally touch the central point of each chakra. This event happens spontaneously. So don't try to anticipate it through complicated visualizations. This event happens because the sixth chakra Agya governs everything. It gives you an alignment with all the chakras. When, while inhaling and exhaling, you mentally chant Om the prescribed number or times in the central point of Kutastha and this subtle action happens also in each chakra. Automatically, even if you are not aware of this fact, there is only a sphere of light in Kutastha and all happens there. You, your body, your spine, everything is there. By going ahead, the exercise becomes more and more pleasant. In time, if it doesn't happen today, it will happen tomorrow. It needs to have patience and to encourage the right attitude, you will feel that the spine exists. That it is possible to perceive it in all its length. There is nothing in particular you do. Don't try to obtain this by moving your awareness down in the body. Everything happens automatically. Meanwhile you notice that the breath is slower and also the mental chant of the various Oms is more calm and pleasant. At a certain point you will feel that the six chakras exist. What will appear through internal vision is not necessarily the traditional form of the spinal column with the six chakras. The chakras can be perceived in many different ways. At a certain point you will realize that the mental chants of Oms and Kutistha are happening in the center of each chakra too. But remember that your attention is always at the central point of the spiritual eye. If your focus is diverted from Kutastha, all the magic of this process is lost. At a certain moment you will notice that the breath is accompanied by a delicate sound in the throat. It is the sound of the friction of the air in the throat. In this way the breath becomes slow and subtle. In time the sound of the exhalation reminds the sound produced by a small flute through which a small amount of air passes. Now don't worry how this sound should be. If everything goes as expected, if you still maintain calmness, your breath crosses the chakras from the first to the sixth and from the sixth to the first and in each chakra the syllable Om is vibrated. This is a delicious situation. Usually this happens toward the end of the 108 breaths. All your being is settled in a bright sphere located between Kutastha and the center of your head. What you see doesn't matter. What matters is that you are perfectly comfortable. Absorbed in the beauty of the procedure. While you are approaching the end of the 108 Kriya breaths, you might have the experience of the light in Kutastha. This will be intensified by Yoni Mudra. After Yoni Mudra and Maha Mudra you will sit again placing yourself in Kutastha without doing nothing. In other words without chanting Om and without paying attention to the breath.